I was speaking to you before about some of the basic definitions that we need and there are a few more that I'd like to talk about. Um, so last I was talking about light year and the fact that uh, you know light travels super duper fast. Okay, it goes 300,000 kilometers per second or you could uh, say 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And the fact that one light year uh, is actually a really far unit, right? I mean, that's a, that's a very large unit of distance. And yet, uh, that's not even close enough because uh, things are, you know, thousands of light years away sometimes. And so uh, we need to use other units. One of the other units that we use is a parsec. And I'm going to explain a little bit about the... Um, well, I'm going to show you an equation, at least, that includes the parsec. So... Remember I had the equation before about apparent brightness and luminosity and how those relate to distance. Well, there's another version. Um, now this is, it, this equation looks totally different and yet it's effectively the same thing. We're just using a different scale here. So this is an equation for how we can find the distance to stars. But this set of units here is really, it's a little bit crazy here. So this right here, M, this is the um, apparent magnitude. And it has no units. M, capital M, is the absolute magnitude. And that also has no units. Now, on your data booklet, it's actually written um, with an LG here. And actually, it, it's just a log. Some people, I think, get a little bit confused when they see that. So just so you know. And this D, that's the distance to the star. But it's measured in parsec. Now, one parsec equals 3.26 light years. And I'll be explaining a little bit more about parsecs. But um, for right now, I just want you to understand at least that there is another version, there's another scale that we can use. And I personally hate this one. This one's really, sorry, I think it's kind of stupid. They do want you to learn it. And this is more of an antiquated scale. Now, um, I say it's stupid. I, I just mean that uh, for students at least to learn about it, I don't know um, why we have to learn two different versions, but so be it. It's not often that I'll criticize what they do in the IB, but um, this scale right here is mainly historic. In other words, um, you know, people have been using this sort of scale for a long time, so we keep using it, even though it's kind of a dumb scale. Um, at least I think it's dumb as far as what students need to learn. In astronomy, though, we use this scale all the time, which means, I mean, it is really important. So even though I don't like it, and I think it's a bit silly as a scale, it's absolutely important. Um, and the reason it's important is, I mean, in, in astrophysics at least, almost all um, uh, brightnesses of stars are measured in magnitudes, not luminosity or apparent brightness, like I mentioned before. So this scale right here, this is basically something that compares how bright things look. Now, it's a logarithmic scale, uh, so that makes it act a little bit different. But the key thing to remember here, this is the key thing, is it works opposite to what you might think. In other words, something that has m equals 0, for example, is very bright. Whereas something that has an m value of, I don't know, let's say 15, is actually very dim you'd probably barely be able to see something that has a magnitude of 15. So it's really weird that it works sort of opposite to what you'd think. It was originally set based on the objects that you'd see in the sky. So if we saw something really, really bright in the sky, well, then they set that at zero. And the problem was then they found brighter things in the sky, like, oops, what do we call it? It's brighter than zero. So it is possible to even have negative magnitudes. Now, what do we mean by apparent versus absolute magnitudes? Apparent magnitude is how bright it appears here on Earth. This is analogous to, um, uh, to the apparent brightness. Remember the other equation we were looking at before, b equaled l over 4 pi d squared? So apparent magnitude is kind of like b here. Whereas the absolute magnitude, that's kind of like l in a sense, but not exactly. 
Now the reason is that absolute magnitude, the way that we've defined it is a little bit strange too. We've defined it as the apparent magnitude of a star that's exactly 10 parsecs away. That's how we just, they've just defined apparent, uh, absolute magnitude. In other words, if you could take every single star and throw them all at exactly 10 parsecs away, which would be 32.6 light years away. If you could put every single star over there, then we'd be able to compare them all evenly. That's kind of how it works. It's a little bit silly though. Uh, so there we go. We have uh, a little bit about the uh, magnitudes. Now you can see that absolute magnitude is like this because um, what you can do is if you set D here equal to 10, 10 over 10 gives you one. Log of one is zero. So then five times zero cancels out. That means M minus M equals zero. Then you can take this M and move it over and then you have M equals M. That's kind of how you can take a look and, and see that what absolute magnitude is. Okay, so again, as long as you make the distance equal to 10 parsecs, you'll see that your apparent magnitude equals your absolute magnitude. That's how it's been defined. It's arbitrary. They could have chosen any other distance as well, but they just chose 10 parsecs as the magic distance. So as long as you use this equation here with magnitudes, then you get distance, but keep in mind it's measured in parsecs. And one parsec is 3.26 light years. There you go. What I think is really cool though, is that when we are looking in the sky, remember I talked about how we're looking back in time. I think that's really awesome. So for example, um, this is maybe a little aside, but if you've ever looked up, if you live in the Northern Hemisphere, at least in the winter time, we have a really, really easy to find constellation. It looks something like this in the sky. It's really, really bright. Um, I think it looks like a big giant R, but it's actually supposed to be Orion. So the Greeks actually had a, a really good uh, sense of imagination uh, because they would imagine seeing some hunter in the sky. So it actually, if you look at these big bright stars, it sort of makes like uh, some guy's shoulders and his uh, belt and his uh, feet. And if you really use your imagination, you see these here. Now the cool thing is, is this star right here, for example, uh, this is just one star that I've actually looked at before during my studies in astrophysics. I've actually uh, done some spectra of this star, which means I've actually, you know, taken a spectrum and taken a look at what this star might be made of. And this star is really cool because, um, I mean, just an example of one, it's what we call a red supergiant. And that means it's much, much bigger than uh, the Earth. Uh, sorry, not the Earth. Well, it's bigger than the Earth, but it's much bigger than the Sun. Which means if we replaced that star with the Sun, if we just, you know, you're a magic and you could just switch them, we'd actually be in it. It's that big that it would actually totally engulf the Earth. Now we expect it to go supernova anytime now. And when I say anytime, I mean plus or minus lots of years. So we're not entirely sure when it's going to happen. But uh, scientists are very interested in looking at this one because it's not actually that far away. It's fairly close. Now, how close? It's 630 light years away, which doesn't sound very close at all, but that's actually pretty close for a star. So that means that the light that you're seeing from uh, this particular star here, Betelgeuse, for example, uh, I'm pronouncing it probably wrong because it's actually originally an Arabic name. So maybe you'd have to ask an Arabic person how they'd pronounce it, although then I'm not spelling it right. But um, if we took this star right here, um, the light that you're seeing from that particular star, for example, is 630 years old, which means you're looking back in time in every sense of the word, which means if that star were to blow up um, right now, it would take us 630 years before we saw the explosion, because right? it takes light that long to get here which means maybe it blew up uh, 629.9 years ago. Maybe tomorrow we take a look and we see then it blows up and we'll see a nice, really pretty, bright, bright star in the sky. Now the sun itself is actually a certain distance away. It's a lot closer, right? Our sun, we're happy with it. But, uh, well, I am at least. I like it. It gives us light. It gives us everything that we need. So hooray for sun. But uh, our sun is actually eight light minutes away. That means the light that you're looking at uh, from the sun is actually eight minutes old. In other words, it, you're looking back in time by eight minutes. 
So what I think is awesome is that, yeah, whenever you're looking up at the sky, you're always looking back in time, which I think is totally mind-blowing. Now, when I mention the sun, it reminds me of my favorite uh, really bad, bad pun. So here it is. Uh, I'm sorry I'm going to subject you to it, but I can't resist. And the joke goes like this. Yesterday, I was so bright, my father called me sun. Oh, that's bad. So we've done some basic definitions now. We're going to go over uh, a few more details about some uh, particular things that you need for the uh, astrophysics option.